Okay, so here is our toolbox. And so I'm gonna put some um, gray on it uh, with my hands. So as you, can, as you can see, I have taped off all of the hinges and parts that I don't wanna have any paint poured on it. Um, and the two stripes that you see on the um, toolbox are uh, stripes that I would like to be able to uh, put some black and uh, copper stripes. I have Art Mines Gold and I have Artist Loft Gold. They're in different colors. Are you able to see them? No. Let's see. We've got them right here. Um, and we have Artist Loft Silver and Art Mines Bronze. This was in the container, I went in and took it out. This is Artist Love Black with Deco Art Americana um, Black and uh, Charcoal to make a metallic black. And then we have Art Mines Copper. So we're gonna start the pour um, with some of the black. Copper, some of the gold. It's a dirty pour, so we're allowing the paint to go inside. Bronze, silver, and artist loves gold. Go back to the copper, black, silver, and gold. will end up going down once I tilt it up and then we'll get the pour effect. what I can. Definitely striped, huh? Down here. That's the back, so that's the front. Ooh, 
this slime. So I like this. This end here is nice. to pull I'm hoping it will sell up I will have a lot of metallic paint left over okay I like that end right there I really like the front when I take the handles off the tape off the handles be able to see them better and then this end also looks okay and the back I think the gold the book oh, just did that I think the black lines will slowly go down like we have some action here put it in here and I'll be able to save the paint for uh, another fork. So this is the back side. And the paint is getting, let's see if I can get this layer out of the way. Get some nice, nice cells. Nice, there's some nice lacing. Let's hope we keep it, huh? That would be pretty. Black has gone all the way down to the base. This looks really pretty. Yeah, I like that lacing. And we've got it over here as well. So this was a dirty pour where I just poured the paint into the um, cup. Oh, look at all of that. Let's hope that that stays. So these handles will come off. All the tape will come off. There's paint underneath. So that looks good. Um, and then the last side too. Um, looks good. Very happy with it. Alright, so next thing you'll see is the dried part where um, we uh, put some resin on it. Thank you. So what I've done is I've taken the tape just off a uh, little bit of the strip here um, and I'm gonna paint it and then decide if I want to take this strip off <clears throat> or leave it like this um, so what I did is I went up to the rest where this piece of tape goes and I used this to cut the lines right down and then moved it over, cut into the tape to remove the tape straight up so I don't pull any, ah, some of the tape isn't coming off. Um, so I don't take any of the side paint.
Okay, so copper lines have been put in. And now uh, this is not tape, but this is and this is. So we're gonna want this to be black before we put the uh, resin on it. This brush right here is going to be a nice one. It's flat, it's um, a little bit smaller than what we're uh, painting. So if we push on the brush slightly, it should widen its um, girth and fill it in. Oh yeah, it's almost exactly. So if I barely push, are you able to see that? Yeah, if I barely push on the brush, it hits where we want it to go. So I keep my eye focused on the right side. Try to smoothly go down, only looking at the right side where it connects to the paint. Use my finger to slowly move down. I'm not paying attention to the left side. I know it's smaller and there's more room down here, so that means it's uneven. But I'm gonna focus on the right side where the black paint hits the copper. I'm not connecting to it, so I keep going back until I connect to it. And then I'll be able to keep moving down Still haven't connected. Now I connected, so I'll keep going down. Being able to go on to the left side now. Focus on only the left side, touching the copper paint. Sliding down. Anytime I realize I'm not on it, I stop, go back. Try to get a smooth engagement with the paint. I'm only going to look at the right side of the brush. I never want to get paint all the way up here either. I want the paint to stay on the tip. you have it. We'll go ahead and continue to do that all the way up. Kind of looks like um, the Giants, a little bit orange and black. My husband will like that aspect of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a break. Before I do, I'm going to show you really quickly. I, I was able to get some of the uh, sandpaper that's um, wet and dry, just a piece of it. Um, it says 400 on it. The higher the number um, has to do with like something to do with how much um, uh, fine, how much grains of sand need to be in the one area. So this is finer than say 250. Yet 600 would be more fine. It would make less noise when I went like this. And uh, 600 is like the finest I've used when I've sanded soapstone sculptures um, or like if I have a chipped glass um, um, cup, uh, no, it's a glass to drink out of and it has a little chip. 
take the sandpaper and sand it wet, like with this, and then I'll take the 600 and it'll make it um, completely clear again. And, and this would still have scratches in it. You'd still have like a porous surface. Um, so this would, was good on this because it allowed the paint to stick much better than um, if I had sanded it super smooth, had no pores on it at all, we could just peel the paint right off um, and that wouldn't be good. So like the bag here doesn't really have any pores so we can peel the paint right off of it. All right, um, get back to you soon, thank you. Hey, this is Lee, Art and Life, and I'm putting resin on my toolbox. hours since I uh, poured my second uh, resin so I'm taking the tape off and trying to make sure that my um, hinges are going to work um, and I will be using 91% uh, alcohol uh, to help me with this hinge that did get some resin in it so tape off and um, gloves on
So a toolbox is very important. You know, you gotta make sure that you don't have tools you don't know how to use. That can be dangerous and you wanna have tools that you do, you do know how to use and you know when to use them. Very important, whether it's for mental health or physical health or for doing projects. Let me stop you and bring it closer in. Okay, so I've got this one almost off. I think I need to heat it up a little bit more. Put the alcohol on it so it will drip away from the toolbox instead of towards it. And this tool will pick it out. Yes, this is what happens when resin gets into a hinge. Oh my gosh, very, very difficult. So the piece of tape I put on the hinge back here wasn't very effective either, and I'm having to get the, uh, the resin that has got inside the back here. So uh, yes, a lot more time consuming than what's on the video um, so I just kind of like uh, uh, edited a lot of the time taking the tape out and then also cleaning the resin so I used the uh, blow dryer again and it seemed to help I was able to get the piece of tape out and um, get some of the um, resin that built up right on the edge of the tape and uh, allowed me to get the hinges to work in the back um, much better than if I hadn't put any tape on. Okay, so I have the handle cleaned up and I have the two, um, let me back it up. cleaned up and uh, this cleaned up I need to put some uh, oil on this so it'll be black. Uh, this is still fresh so um, I'm trying not to scratch it. Um, and this is the back side. Um, these were very difficult. These hinges were very difficult in here to get them clean. from the inside as well. Um, like I said, resin can coat through anything, it seems like. So this is um, really nice and loose now. I was able to get these free too. This still needs to be wiped off with alcohol. I'll do that tomorrow. It's very late, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. But at least it's not um, 
stuck. Always have extra stuff laying around that you want to be able to resin with if you have leftover resin. I like more white over this where I was able to make it lift it a little bit. Um, so the next time I pour resin, I'll go ahead and um, put a little bit of white on top. And then I just put a little bit of sand and some shells down here. And then a little bit of white and blue. that's nice um, and then I'll have to take the tape off tomorrow using the blow dryer it's too late tonight um, and then this part uh, you can't really see love very well um, and the sides ended up pouring down and then lipping on the bottom so there's part in the middle if I would have painted it white that wouldn't have happened but it was grab something because I had some extra. So um, then in the cup, the resin dried around the brush. And so I broke it off and tried to make it look like ice cubes on um, a piece of wood. So then I took the leftover blues and whites um, and then use the blow dryer to blow it out and uh, so it was fun you know just get used to playing with resin um, okay I'm going to bed so this is just the um, final toolbox I just wanted to show you how it looks after the resin has been um, put on it and this is the top part I really like the way box or any other thing commissioned um, to pour and that, like, have this kind of embellishment. This could be a name or this looks like the Giants to me. Um, but in, in any case, um, it uh, could have someone's name on it or anything. Um, the imagination could dictate um, whatever you would like. So I went ahead and decided to add some epoxy. I'm going to show you now. Instead of ending the tape, I'm adding a little bit longer to it just to show you how I um, applied the epoxy. Okay, so I have used plumber's epoxy to put around the edges of everywhere I have cut. Um, um, where I took the tape off and I cut it, there were marks that um, over time, I think, would end up um, like flaking the resin off possibly. So this is another place that might do the same thing. So I went ahead and um, put a strip of plumber's epoxy on both ends as well. And I'm gonna do it right across here. And then I did it right here. And there was a, a part that where the tape had been, but it's not going to be affected. Um, so I will go ahead and make some epoxy snake for you to show you how I put it on right here. So the plumber epoxy is actually called water weld. There's all different kinds of brands. Here's two pieces that are now hard as a rock I can't use. So um, I take a little piece and I cut off at the end so it's not crunchy. And then I use alcohol on a towel can't find the corner that was wet now. Well, I will make a new corner. So I use 91 proof um, alcohol and cut off the amount that I'm going to use. So that should be a nice amount to make this strip. This piece right here should be able to make Whoops. Make the strip between here and here. 
I'm gonna back it up a little bit so I have room. So I'll stick this back on here so it won't dry up. Put it back in the tube. And it really won't dry up um, too quickly until you start to mix it. Plumber's epoxy or any kind of uh, gray and the white that when mixed together will form a bond. And so uh, rather than putting something on this that might come off, this um, is going to stick to it. And it's a little bulky, so I think I might go ahead and paint it silver instead of black. It might be too, too much of a statement to be black. Um, so make sure you wear um, gloves when you're mixing. And as soon as the mixture is um, molded, I try to keep one hand without any on it because it becomes very sticky when you have it on. Um, anyway, once it's all white, all one color, go ahead and start getting it the way you want it. So I'm going to take this and put it right on the edge like this. Put it on here. And then I'll use my tool. Start pushing it onto the metal. And try to make it look as uniform as possible. Then I'll take some alcohol to smooth it out. So that's how it's gonna look. And then I'll paint it um, silver. So here I am painting this rim of silver, this rim of plumber's epoxy with silver. So it'll blend in. I was thinking of doing it black, but I really think it would would have like stood out. So the silver blends in. Open a little bit, like I really think there's a chance that it could have like been chipped off. With this plumber as epoxy, there's no way the um, the edges are going to be chipped off around each area where I had the tape um, and um, where the epoxy met. Okay, so the silver was covered with Liquitex medium gloss finish. Um, so it's all now sealed in nice and snug as a bug in the rug. Put two or three coats of it on there to make sure. Thank you so much.